Mobility Forum 2018. Learning abroad, Rob. <laughs> learning abroad. It is learning abroad now. Learning abroad. So I think we've just decided, I'm, oh, I've decided unilaterally that we have to, I have to talk to you every year, Dave. Thanks, Rob. About, yeah, that's right. I'm like, let's do an interview. Um, what's on your mind right now? Student mobility, or outbound mobility, learning abroad. What's yeah. hot and interesting and new? Look, I think I got a surprise a couple of weeks ago when I was at an um, IEA board meeting and we're talking about the election coming up and what are the issues that IEA is going to be talking about. And at the same time, in the back of my head, I've been planning this research project for quite a while and just working on the timing in my own calendar when I could launch it. Mm -hmm. And it was around the boardroom table that, that the other board members actually said, well, that's going to be really timely because it is going to be part of the election discussions and I think it's actually the first time that that will have happened that we will be expecting it may not happen it may not become a political issue but, but it, it could but it actually could, yeah. be something that we're talking about around the election time which is is the first time it's you know and, and something quite unexpected um, right like you think in, in fact in this room I think like you you would be the most experienced person here who's been kind of like actively working in mobility does that for... make me old no Oh. Maybe Brad Doherty could actually Maybe Brad. Talk. <laughs> there we go. If you're watching Brad, hello. Um, but it's fascinating. You think back 15 years that we would yeah. ever be standing, firstly, with this like national program, which has created so much impact, and secondly, yeah. potentially an election issue. Yeah, and Amazing. It, it really highlights that we need more data around what we do. We need mm. those proof points, not just... Um, uh, you know, important people getting up and talking about the, the impact of it yeah. and students, that's all great but actually having the data that we can report on this is the long term impact and this is what we know about what we do we all know that short term programs there's some phenomenal short term programs yeah. and some wonderful faculty who take our students and give them those opportunities and to, to hear that that's being questioned in uh, in Senate estimates around how much money the government is then spending on, on supporting short term programs is kind of it's a bit disheartening, but we need to do a better job in, in telling the story through evidence. So, so really concretely, what's the project all about? Uh, the project will look at career outcomes in terms of did it help them get a job, do they think um, it has helped their long-term career prospects, mm -hmm. and what are the skill sets that it's helped them to develop yeah. um, for their careers. And the rest of it is all background information that we can crunch to learn more about who they are and what they're doing, what type of jobs are they doing. How, yeah. how far out are you looking, like students straight? out of uni, five years, ten Actually, years, how far it out? it doesn't matter. The way I've set up the survey is they yeah. put in the year they graduate and then from the data set we should just be able to narrow that to what's of interest. Awesome. I'm even thinking about what happens if current students, it's really the line has blurred since last time I did that. Many more students are going on to graduate study. We could have students who are long-term, part-time grad students who still identify as being a student mm. but are actually working full-time. So I think we need to be a lot more agile in how we set it up this time. Yeah. Mm. Super interesting, and the thing that struck me when you know you showed me that little kind of short description of it was that like this is the kind of piece of research that everyone has been talking about for a decade. It's true, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually the piece of research. Everyone's like, oh, we should have some longitudinal stuff, seeing like where yeah. people are now. Yeah, we just have to bite the bullet and get it out. And, and actually get it, it out. And, yeah. And um, lucky, I've, I've got some good institutional support in Melbourne, University of Melbourne, and Deakin University both supporting that project nice. um, from a logistical point of view. And then IEAA Research Committee has great expertise and great passion around this topic. Yeah. Um, and of course, Phil um, is on the board for the National Council and is in a great position to advocate. Yeah. So. Yeah important. What else is going on? I mean, that's a key piece of research. So we're now August 2018. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's all by, hopefully reporting by end of the year. Yeah, by, by or early January. next year. Well, by yep. the time, it, unless they call the election soon, which yeah. who knows if that's going to happen, but planning um, out for the beginning of next year. Yeah. And so just for the reference point for you guys watching this, today was the day that Malcolm <laughs> Turnbull perhaps got knifed permanently. <laughs> we don't know yet. It's coming no. tomorrow, but yeah, um, just possibly. for context. Yeah, possibly. Yes. We're going to see. Yes. Um, what else is happening? I think it's great that there's so many people here and made it all the way to Perth. It really shows um, the good work that's happening in the sector. Yeah. Mm. It's changed a lot, hasn't it? I it mean, has changed yeah. enormously. And this morning was kind of cool. I think we're seeing different kinds of presenters now. We've had student panels several years, which have been fantastic. Um, Ashley Fell, who spoke this morning, talking about demographics. Was, was really interesting. It's great to get that external perspective yeah. with information. Yeah, and, and I think um, there was some comments this morning about the careers office and the learning abroad office and, and sometimes, and I'm in the fortunate position where both operate underneath 
you know, I'm, I'm, I have both of those teams. And it's, it's less and less distance between yeah. the data that we saw today. And I'm looking at that all the time and it's mm. informing the work we do. And we really should have a good understanding of the world that our students are moving into in order to do the best jobs we possibly can in the learning abroad space. What, what do you think in a really practical way can be done by institutions to bring that, or like to close that gap between careers and the work that we do as like hands-on mobility people sending out students? I think it's just more seeing it as one integrated student experience. Yeah, and absolutely. And it's, it's really taking the student's perspective on this and saying, okay, one part of it is, is the learning abroad part and the other part is what are they going to do after and what are the other experiences that are there. Yeah. And more and more students are taking more than one experience and it's not a one-shot involvement in their lives anymore. Mm. We're involved in their lives across a larger span of their, their university career and even longer if they go on to postgraduate study. So it's, it's extending that across the student life cycle and really putting ourselves in the student's shoes when we're trying to make decisions. Asking the students, what should we do? Yeah. Let's not make decisions in isolation. Yeah, that's so critical. I mean, everything I've seen in the last 12 to 18 months I've been doing, I'm working heavy in the digital marketing kind of space now and everything is like authenticity, the, the, the value of the, the value journey of the student and and for us to be like the, not trying to be the hero in this story, but just being the guide to the students and letting them be the hero of their own story. And that's kind of true, right? I mean, with like it's almost like by dividing off careers from mobility, yeah, we're not letting them be the hero of that journey through university. Yeah, that's our silos. That's yeah. not their experience. Yeah. They don't they don't care how we organise the university. They yeah. care how the services uh, are delivered to them. So, so we've true. got to stop caring and letting those barriers interfere with the work we do and get on with it. Awesome. Always a pleasure to chat. Great. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Thanks, <laughs> See you in twelve months.